Tonight, we sit down with Dave Seville to talk about his past, his present, and his future on and off the football field, from his sons, to his teammates, to social media sites such as Twitter, and the stir that he always seems to create on 60 Minutes. Hello, I'm Yokona Kazan, and tonight we're sitting down with the notoriously outspoken Plantsell's defensive back, Dave Seville. Father, son, player. He has made quite the scene. We caught up with him in his living room, basement, for an interview. How's it going, guys? I guess the first thing that you know, oh, you always have to start with when people sit down with you is the whole Sons as Chipmunks thing. How did that, that get started? Were you on board from the start? How was it to, to raise uh, such unique uh, people? Well, first off, uh, I want to thank you for uh, opening the interview, you know, saying, welcome, this is Dave Seville, you know, it just started off pretty weird. But, uh, to your question, you know, I know, uh, uh the movie it answered all questions, but I, I respect the fact that no one saw it. It was a pile of shit. But, you know, they, uh, they came to me. They ate all my, my cheese puffs. Um, I, I found out they could sing. Jackpot. Instant money. Uh, David Cross kind of fucked me a little bit, but I ended up getting the, getting the chipmunks to sign that contract, as you know in my bio, that, uh, gave me 98% of the royalties, so you know, payday. And that's, that's all I have to say about that. Are you saying you're a crook? <laughs> Am I not saying it? But certainly there has to have been something more that came out of the experience of raising three chipmunks as opposed to three human uh, sons or daughters. Uh, we have some crazy footage. Uh, some, some saw it at the beginning. Of course, there's you with the werewolf. Now, this is not a, an occurrence. You didn't just run into a werewolf here. I mean, you saw things like Frankenstein, werewolves, all type of spiritual beings. What was going through your mind during these situations, and did it make you into the man you were? Because as everyone saw there with the werewolf, you were kind of like a little puss. Well, uh, I was just trying to, uh, be a very respectful person here. I don't really remember the first part of the question. It was something about raising them. I don't really give a shit about that. But, uh, about the spiritual creatures, you know, <laughs> what else do you want me to do? You're staring Frankenstein down the face. You're staring werewolf down. You think I'm going to try and, you know, square up with them? I don't think so. You're going to lose that battle nine times out of ten. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> this interview sucks so far. Now, let's talk about your emergence on onto Twitter. You have obviously been very outspoken. You've reached out to some of your teammates, uh, talked down to the media a little bit. That's right. And you've, you know, you've also... People want to know about the whole masquer masquer the masquerade ball that you attended with Master Crane mm. back in your fraternity days. Did you go to college with him? What is the relationship there? Um, you know, the masquerade ball, uh it was it was a fun night, I'm not even gonna lie to you. But um you know, me and Master Crane, we used to be great friends. Um uh I was I was very excited when when he joined the plant cells, and I know this may sound weird, considering I said, I tweeted at him, uh, using my Twitter account, Seville Thrills, saying, uh, I barely even knew him. And that's because, you know, I was scared. I was scared that I was going to get, uh, suspended for, uh, 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 potential drug case, which I, I'm, I'm not guilty of. And I, I just, I don't want that to be on my reputation, so, you know, I thought Master Crane was a great guy before the drug problems, you know, he just started acting really stupid, and he started acting like a black person, as you can see from his tweets, and, you know, it's not the kind of person I want to associate myself with, and when I say that, I mean black people. So you've never had anything to do with crystal meth? No, 
or black people. Are you a racist? <laughs> Somewhat. Somewhat. Now, for the past couple of years, you've been a member of the Garden State Plan Cells. It seems that you just burst onto the scene with your absolute energy. It seemed like you just got picked up out of nowhere for the Uncle Chip tournament, which shouldn't have even happened, people argue. Can you explain your relationship with, with the, the plant cell players? You know, are, is everything good there? We have seen tweets from your head coach, uh, uh, Tim Allen, from the, the years past, and he actually tweeted at that his, his starting QB, Randall Boggs, sucked, and he called him a lizard shit. Now, do you guys have faith in your, in your quarterback? Do you get along? Is the team chemistry okay? Um... Team chemistry has always been a pretty, uh, pretty big issue with the Plant Cells organization, but uh, it's really more of an issue offensively, as you mentioned, Randall. The quarterback always gets it the worst, whether it be from the coaches or anyone else on the staff. Never cracker, never cracker, or the the wide receivers are the ones that give it to the quarterback the most. It's usually not direct, but it's there, and. Uh, uh, I don't recall uh, Tim Allen ever tweeting anything about uh, about Lizard uh, Randall, but um, you know, if he said that, you know, maybe he was drunk. He, it's a big drinking organization, and I think everyone in the public has known that, so this should not be an issue. Do you partake in the the? consumption of the beverages? I'm not going to say no. I mean, I'm not a square over here. I want to fit in. Can we keep the, the ants out of the building, please? But we do have to say, back in 2005, ants, can we get the ants out of here? In 2005, it was a tragic day. You, your house burned to the ground. Uh, you had a great deck, as seen in the pictures. And not only that, you rebuilt your house, and then a few days later your house got raided in an unwarranted search by the police. Can you tell us a little about that? Uh, the, the public wanted n coverage on it, but just got limited information. Um, yeah, uh, about uh, my house. I... It's so hard to talk about because I love that house and that deck. I built it myself and it really meant a lot to me. Uh, I spent a good amount of hours every day reading the paper on that deck. You know, uh, I was sitting on the deck. Uh, I was sitting on the deck when uh, the 49ers called me saying they drafted me in the seventh round. And I was on the deck when they called me back the next day and said I was cut. I was on my way into my house on that deck when the plant cells called me and signed me. And I was in the plant cells facility when I got the call from the police saying, your house is no more. And, uh, when I, I built my second house from the ground up again, right on the ashes of my old house, and four days later, the police were saying, we're here to raid. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know what to say, you know. It, it was unwarranted. They had the warrants, though. So it wasn't how, warranted. That's all I have to say about it. How did the house burn down? You never... Uh, Theodore was uh, making an omelet. And <laughs> <laughs> now, football has obviously been a big part of your life being a member of the Plant Cells and being drafted by the San Francisco 49ers. How do you prepare for each of these seasons? How are you preparing for this season? And what are your expectations going into the 2011 football season? Well, I prepare for the season um, like any other uh, football player would. You know, mentally, you, you got to get back into the mind state that you're going to be working pretty hard for the uh, next several months. Even though the season's only uh, three days long, you know, it's it's not really a good payout, but you, you love the game, so that's the sacrifice that you make. But, you know, of course, there's conditioning 
you know, there hasn't been very fierce conditioning this off season, but there there's been more than usual. So I should be in better shape than I was last year, and uh, I I hope everyone else on the team is uh, is prepared as well because. Last year was it was dismal all around, and you know the players were uh, sucking air, and no one had the stamina. The legs were all cramping up, and it was just a it was a pitiful sight, and it, uh, it was a very bad way to begin my official plant cell career. Just wrapping up this interview, what are you what are you expecting to do this season? Just on a personal level, I know a championship is always in the works, but what are you looking to do, and who are you looking to to prove wrong this season? I am looking to do very well. I'm looking to intercept at least six passes to match my first season. Um, I'm looking to prove wrong, Bob Buckner, first and foremost. He just does not seem to have the confidence in me, and. Uh, who else, you know, all the critics, Master Crane, I'm looking to prove him wrong, he said he was going to torch me, I don't think so, I'm looking to prove uh, Seamus Finnegan wrong, even though he didn't say that he was going to torch me, but it was written, and you know, I'm looking to prove that wrong, so, I am determined to intercept 17 passes this year, 17, 17, the record broken by Marlon, you reckon you broken by Malin. <laughs> Whatever. In a recent documentary, we looked at my Mars zits, but <laughs> we also saw that Bill Belichick likes to fish on Nantucket. Perfect, huh? Those Is there any specific place that you like to spend your off seasons and besides looking at my zits? <laughs> Perfect, huh? Love those zits. <laughs> Love those Nantucket blues. I'm whoever I said my name was. Was. Thank you for joining us on tonight's 60 Minutes. The worst interview ever. <laughs> Grab a hand. There we go. See you later. Thanks. Oh. Is this going to keep you out? He's okay. He's okay.